Hello, my dear friends, and welcome to Dr. Monkey, where we laugh together and cry together, but hopefully take something away to treat each other a little better. Here's some interesting stories. One about a crazy parent who demanded OP date her daughter, or OP will be fire. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I hope you'll enjoy it. Story 1. So, for context, I'm a 17-year-old male and I work at a Segway tour company. It's actually really fun. I get to ride Segways around the city and talk to people, and I get paid to do it. Plus, the tipping isn't bad. So anyway, there was a tour booked a couple of days ago, and I came in about 20 minutes early to answer emails and get everything ready. The group shows up, mother and daughter, and that's when things got interesting. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by telling you what EP and me stand for, but D, daughter, and FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation, just for some useful info. EP and D come in and I check them in. Me. All right, I have some waivers for you to sign. D, how old are you? D, uh, 16. Me. Okay then, you don't need to sign a waiver. I ask this because if kids are younger than 18, their parents sign waivers for them. But EP only heard me say the first part, not when I said D didn't need to sign a waiver, so she thought I was just asking her daughter how old she was. This was probably what started it all. We go on the tour and while I'm giving my spiel, EP keeps interrupting me to tell me stuff about D and to find out if we're compatible. Me. And so this nonprofit organization opened in... EP, are you in college? Me, <laughs> no. I'm a junior in high school. I'm usually pretty free with info about myself on tours because it helps keep people relaxed and initiates conversations during lulls in the tour. Plus, it helps with tipping. EP, oh, D is also a junior. She's an artist. Stuff like this keeps happening throughout the tour. And every time D gets redder and redder. My mom does this too where she just tells random mall attendants about me. So I know what Dee is going through, and I feel her pain. At the end of the tour, I tell the two of them that they have 15 minutes to go around the town, and then they can meet me back at the Segway place. I get back and start getting things set up for their return. They roll in, pardon the pun, and I take their Segways to start charging them. So what do you think of my daughter? Me. Pardon me. What? E.P. I saw you checking her out during the tour. Are you going to ask her out? D. Mom, stop. Me. Uh, ma'am, I just recently got out of a relationship and I'm really not looking for anything right now. E.P. What? Me, huh? E.P. Is my daughter not good enough for you? Me. No, that's not it. I just said that I just got out of a relation. E.P. You're going to date my daughter and that is final. Me. You can't tell me what to do. I'm not your kid. And if I don't want to date your daughter, I don't have to. Besides, you haven't even asked her if she wants to date me. D. Yeah, I don't want to date him. Me. See? E.P. I'm going to call your boss and tell him about your terrible customer service. You're never going to work in this town again. Me. Pulling out my phone. All right. You want to call him and explain the situation? Now you're trying to force me to date your daughter and get me fired for saying no? Then I guess the absurdity of the situation finally sunk in, and her face transitioned from pure rage to slight confusion. E Wait, maybe I don't want to. Me. No, let's call him. Start to go through my contacts and press my boss's name. Let's have this conversation. E.P. I don't think that's a good idea. Phone starts ringing. E.P. D. Let's go. E.P. runs out the door. D. turns to me and says, I'm sorry, then follows her mom. I hang up the phone before my boss answers and start cleaning the segways. You should have waited for the call to go through and warned your boss about the E.P. and the D. who didn't want to sign the waiver in case they'd try anything funny. And by funny, I mean disgusting illegal behavior. Story 2 This story includes G., my good friend, E.M., G's entitled mom, and me. So I struggle with this disorder called trichotillomania. It's basically where you use hair pulling as a coping mechanism when things get stressful in life. 
At the time this happened, I was almost completely bald because of it. I had patches of wiry regrowing hair and some completely bald patches. It was not a pretty sight, and I wore a beanie 24-7 to cover it up. Luckily, I had really supportive and understanding friends who did so much to cheer me up on a daily basis. So my friend G invited me around to her house for dinner one night. I'd known her family since primary school, and I was aware of her mom's strict dinner table policies. They were pretty acceptable, with no coats, hats, elbows on the table, etc. But I figured my friend had explained my situation to her, and she would understand. This was definitely not the case. She was visibly uncomfortable with me wearing the beanie as we sat to eat. Ian, OP, would you mind taking off your head at the dinner table? Me, immediately uncomfortable, considering how to explain the situation in front of G's younger brother. G, Mom, it's okay, just leave it. Ian, snapping, don't talk back to me like that. This is my dinner table, and I don't allow outdoor clothes during mealtimes. Me, Ian, I'm really sorry, but I prefer to keep it on for personal reasons. Ian, getting up. This is ridiculous, just take off the hat. When I didn't budge, she grabbed the top of my beanie and started to pull it off. My hand started to my head, trying to resist. She went to make a comment about me being childish, but promptly shut up as soon as she revealed my battered, petching, bald head. Her mouth kind of hung open for a second or two as the rest of the table stayed silent. G, bless her, was furious with her yank, yanked my precious beanie from her hands and quickly rushed me away from the table. Edit. Just in case anyone was interested, nothing much happened after this incident. My friend was really apologetic for her mom and I was honestly too shocked and embarrassed to know what to say. She discreetly let me out of the house because I wasn't comfortable in that environment anymore. Later on, I know that my mom had a discussion with her. I don't want to get into the whole story about this, but EM started to exercise her gossipy, caring nature around the other parents. In the end, she did give me an apology. It was awkward, but I accepted it. Maybe just tell her you have a hair loss. No need to specify why, and it makes you uncomfortable to show it. This isn't the last time an adult will do this to you. They really hate hats indoors for some reason. If they ask to know why you have hair loss, say you'd prefer not to talk about it. Story 3 So, for the record, I was 14 when this happened, and I no longer talk to him. On my 14th birthday, my grandmother told me to dress nice because we were going to dinner. I was okay with this because I was the cook in the family, and I didn't want to cook that night, so I put on a long red dress and a pair of heeled boots. This part's important later. We left for the place. My grandmother didn't go because she wasn't wanting to leave home that day. And when we arrived, instead of going straight inside, my grandpa told me to wait by the car. Being curious, I agree, and he walked off leaving me standing by the truck, curious as to what was going to happen. Soon enough, he comes back, but with a man I'd never seen before behind him, who introduced himself as my dad. I was having mixed feelings, but when he tried to hug me, I pushed him back, to which my grandpa had to inform him that contact with people causes me anxiety. But my dad wouldn't listen, and hugged me anyway, which sent me into a frenzy of hard to breathe. But once I calmed myself down, we went inside. When we got there, he was going to pay. But he said he left his wallet, and I learned so did my dad. So, I ended up paying with the money I made from digital design work. First red flag. When we got sat down, four other people came, who also turned out to be his kids. So, I figured we all didn't know him, and he was preparing to hear lots of questions. But the entire dinner, my dad had ignored me and spoke to the others as if he knew them. When it was time to leave, He stopped me and asked if I wanted to say hello to my brothers and sisters, as I hadn't talked the entire time. I informed him I was uncomfortable with all of them, as they were strangers to me, and that is, rather not spend much more of my time on something that was going to make me uncomfortable, to which he proceeded to go off. He called me names, told me I looked like an easy girl, and that I was selfish because his son was turning 20 in two days, before telling me I'd never hear from him again. I'm a fatherless person but I think I'd rather not know him. 
If you were making enough from graphic design at 14 to pay for dinner, I'd say you were doing fine without that idiot in your life. Did your grandpa at least reimburse you for what you spent on dinner that night? Because otherwise, that is pretty crappy of them to make you pay for your and a bunch of other people's dinner on your birthday. Extra idiot points that your grandpa didn't try and stop your sperm donor from hugging you when he obviously knew it would upset you, and didn't back you up when he went off on you. Story 4 Back when I was still a kid, it was hard for anything to be exclusively mine, and as my brother got older, he craved money for things above all else. He and I both got allowances, equal allowances, so that it was sort of fair. I say sorta, because he didn't have to do chores for his. Well, I did. But that's in the past now, because my brother is now having to do all those chores. For nothing. My brother always wanted more money, though. Whether he spent it or not, he loved having new things. But sometimes, he'd just save the money instead. Which is odd, because you'd think him the kind of guy who'd splurge his savings on the first thing he wants. My brother and I both got allowances of about $25 a month, and I was pretty thankful for it. I usually saved most of my money, though, but my brother always wanted more. Monday, as a teenager, I came home to find my room had been ransacked, and the only thing gone was my money. I'd hidden it to try and keep it from my brother, because, well, obvious reasons. If you readers know what my brother is like by now, I thought I'd hidden it well, but... He found it anyway. My mom was home when he did it too, and she acted like she didn't even notice. But there's no way she could not have heard him tearing my room up. I called her out on that during the intervention, and she just cried and made excuses about my brother being special. Till other family members told her to shut up and own up to it. My room was on the first floor right near the living room. My door was completely in view of the couch. And when I pointed this out, back then... My mom just made the, but he's special, he's not like you, excuse for my brother. I said I wanted the money back, and my mom just made more excuses. My dad too when he got home later. So yeah, excuses then and now. Back then, I did eventually get the money back because I refused to let it go. I heard my brother screaming as they took the money out of his piggy bank and gave it back to me. And they had the most disappointed looks on their faces like, I just robbed my brother, even though he had robbed me. But they couldn't tell me off because I wasn't in the wrong. And they knew it. I don't imagine many kids getting in the kind of situations where they are more right about something than their parents very often. A few months later, and the whole situation repeated, my brother ransacked my room again and stole the money I'd hidden again. And that time, my parents didn't want to do anything about it and basically said that they couldn't bear to see my brother so disappointed from taking his money. I reminded them that the stolen money wasn't his money, and it was really crappy that they were just sitting back and letting that happen. My dad yelled at me to go to my room for saying that. So, the next day, I rode my bike to my aunt's house and told her everything. She came back home with me and asked my parents if they really let my brother steal from me, and did nothing about it. My mom just started whining that my brother's special needs, and she didn't want to make him cry again. And my dad backed her up. My aunt just gave them both that narrow eyed look and reminded them that they have two sons, and my feelings mattered too. And what they were doing was very wrong. And it meant that my brother would never respect. And it meant that my brother would never respect boundaries, and would think he could always get away with stealing when he gets older. My aunt asked me openly how much my brother took. I stated the number, which at the time was everything I had, save for the few bucks in my wallet. My aunt gave my parents an expectant glare. My parents tried making a few more excuses, but my aunt had a counter for each one. Finally, my parents went into my brother's room, and a moment later my brother was screaming. My parents came back with all the money my brother took, and practically threw it at me for making my brother cry. My aunt then told them off for acting that way when I'd done nothing wrong, and they picked up all of the money they'd thrown at me and gave a pretty forced apology. My aunt said that she'd be severely disappointed in them if they let the situation repeat, and before she left, my aunt offered for me to hide my money at 
her house in a lockbox she had. I took her up on that and started keeping my savings over there. My brother ended up ransacking my room two more times looking for money. But I was keeping every cent I had at my aunt's house. My parents actually asked me where I'd hidden it, and I refused to tell. Then I asked why they wanted to know so badly anyway, and my dad instantly got defensive about it. My mom calmed him down, and they didn't ask again. Since he couldn't find my money in my room, my brother figured I must have hidden it somewhere else. So he started tearing the whole house apart, one room after another. And who was made to clean up the house? Why, yours truly, of course. My parents started to blame me for the whole situation. But when I asked how I was at fault for not letting my brother steal from me, their only counter was that my brother had special needs. I swear, they used that line with me a thousand times. That was something else I heavily berated my parents for in the family intervention. The final straw came when my brother ransacked our parents' bedroom. My parents had a small suitcase safe that they kept some cash in. And my brother locked himself in their room, then took the whole safe and started bashing it around stuff to try and get it open, because he couldn't find the keys. By the time my parents were able to get the door open by breaking it open, my brother had destroyed the room. And he never got that safe open. He just sat there on the floor, clutching it and crying about the money inside it. My dad was so angry that he turned red, and they actually started yelling at my brother and grounded him. A very rare sight for me to see back then. Then my parents forced my brother to help me clean up the mess. After that, my brother never ransacked my or my parents' rooms looking for money again. But... He'd still go rooting around every time he got an idea where my savings might be. So I started acting like I was given hints by repeatedly going into certain places while he was watching. He ransacked the backyard shed, dug a bunch of holes in the yard under the back porch, and even ransacked the attic. My parents really hit their breaking point with the attic and grounded my brother again. They never figured out I let him on either. My parents did eventually figure out I was keeping my money at my aunt's house, and they didn't argue with my reasoning for doing it, but either my brother overheard or one of them spilled the beans to him. Because the next time we visited my aunt, my brother tried to hunt for the money, but my aunt yelled at him to stop, and my brother would just sit on the floor and cry. This happened a few times and my aunt bluntly stated she'd press charges for any damages if my brother ransacked anything and also kept a digital camera on hand to record anything if need be. My parents heavily scolded my brother to stop looking for my money. It wasn't his, and he can't have it. Q, more screaming and crying that he wants it like a three-year-old, even though he was seven at the time. Then my brother said he didn't want to go to auntie's house anymore, so my parents visited less. My aunt visited us at a lot more than we visited her anyway. I was pretty much able to keep my money away from my brother till after I moved out. He's never managed to steal cash from me again. His classmates at school were another story. He was caught looking through the backpacks of other kids many times, and he was forced to return stolen stuff and then sit home, where he cried to mom and dad, who then tried to have words with the school, who berated them for letting my brother think what he was doing was okay. They had to teach my brother that it's not okay to go through other people's stuff. And I actually heard him say, but I wanted what they had a few times. This excuse got used again when my brother stole an envelope with birthday money from a cousin during a birthday party. He tried to stuff it in his shirt and walk out with it later. But the cousin noticed it was missing and had suspected my brother right away and pointed everyone to him. He ended up crying and thrashing when my dad found the envelope hidden in a shirt. We left that party early. Your parents are enabling theft. If they don't rein it in, the cops would. He wants something at a store, he takes it. He deserves it because he's special. If he wants something expensive like electronics, he takes it and screams at the police for taking it back and the judge for punishing him. He ends up having a court-ordered psychiatric evaluation. Well, guys, that's all for today. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, I'm going to link it right here. The story's about a kid who tries to hurt OP and threatens him.
Then goes Quan to his mother when he can't hurt OP. Check this out if you haven't, and I'll see you next time on Dr. Monkey.